This is KGW News at 11. First at 11, amid a celebration of flying, people in Hood River are coming to terms with a horrible loss. Yesterday's small plane crash there killed two. One man, Matthew Titus, was from California. The other was from Hood River, and we just got this photo of him in tonight. Friends say that right there is Ben Davidson explaining the mechanics of a plane to a crowd. Their deaths and the crash came right before the annual Hood River Fly-In, a festival dedicated to aviation and to rare planes like the one that went down. Now that festival is still going, but the tone, of course, has changed. Today in Hood River, a flag flew at half staff and flowers lay at the base of the pole. This for two men killed yesterday when authorities say a 1974 Piper PA 18150 went down at the Hood River Airport. Sky 8 caught the scene from overhead. Witnesses said the plane was about 100 feet off the ground when they heard the engine sputter and it went into a steep dive. The NTSB and FAA are investigating. Fast forward 24 hours, the nearby Antique Airplane and Automobile Museum hosted its annual Hood River Fly-In. Crowds and planes dotted the landscape. Memories of the two victims were front and center for many. I mean, he flew most of the aircraft that you see. Brian Heim took some time today to tell us about his friend. Ben Davidson was the passenger killed in that crash yesterday. He was 55 and from Hood River. Davidson loved aviation. This is a photo of him teaching people about the mechanics of a plane. Heim says this was one of Davidson's favorite events. For Heim, it's hard to believe he's gone. Ben was one of those guys that just really embodied aviation. Everything he did gave to the aviation community, the flying that he did, the support for the aircraft, everything that he did was just, it was from his heart. Our hearts go out to his loved ones. Turning now to turmoil in the sports world, the Portland Timbers played tonight at Providence Park and per usual, the Army packed the stands, minus this time a few regulars. Major League Soccer actually banned some fans over this symbol behind me. As KGW's Art Edwards was at the game tonight and Art, MLS said that sign violated its new policy. That's right. You know, they don't want political signs at the games. That sign is associated with Antifa. We don't know the number of, uh, of fans who were banned from the match, uh, but those, those signs with that symbol were being flown at the last home match, and that's what prompted the ban. Fans showed up early for the match with Sporting Kansas City. Inside Providence Park, the Timbers Army held its usual spot at one end of the stadium, fired up and cheering for the Timbers. One member of the Army wore the Iron Front while leading chants and also held a scarf that says against fascism. Members of the Timbers Army were banned for three games by the league after members of the Army defied recent warnings and flew banners with an Iron Front symbol during last week's match against Real Salt Lake. The Iron Front is banned under the league's policy against political signs and it is associated with Antifa. One of those banned is Abraham Goldman Armstrong, the owner of Cider Riot. Fans of the game say they were disappointed in the move by MLS. I think it's a bad move by MLS for sure. Um, I think a lot of soccer culture is grounded in uh, both things that are political, um, especially here in Portland. You know, people really care about that stuff, and I think it's kind of silly to say that I can't have a place at games. The Timbers Army has been vocal about the ban. They released a statement on their blog earlier this week. It says in part, we disagree with the league's stance, with its misapplication of the fan code of conduct, and with its failure to consult the human rights experts in the code's creation. Even supporters of Sporting Kansas City are surprised by the ban. Soccer culture certainly is grounded on people's beliefs, and as far as I know about Portland, that's pretty surprising that they ban fans for just displaying what they believe in. Now, just a short time ago, we did hear from the owner of Cider Riot, the, one of the people who has been banned from Timbers games. He said he is very disappointed that the club is prohibiting the, the display of anti-fascist and anti-racist symbols in the stadium. He says he's been a season ticket holder uh, in that section for the Timbers Army, Section 107, since 2001. He says that being anti-fascist and anti-racist has been an integral part of the Timbers Army since its inception. Now, the Timbers Army is working with Timbers management and also with the MLS to see if, some, if they can come to some kind of an agreement on whether or not those signs can be displayed. Maggie, back to you. All right, we'll see what happens. Art Edwards live for us. Art, thank you.
<laughs> the official timer shows mercy here at Hudson Stadium. <laughs> 77 to 6, Mario Cristobal and the Oregon Ducks with a dominant performance. Oh man, talk about a blowout night tonight. The Ducks dominated, as you heard, Nevada with 11 touchdowns from 11 different players. And as you can imagine, Ducks fans are going crazy online, especially after the heartbreaking loss in last week's season opener. So I'm going to show you some of our favorite posts now. We're seeing this gif quite a bit on Twitter. That's senior Troy die there dancing. On to the next post that we loved. This video here from our sister station in Eugene, a reporter, victory walk, hashtag go ducks. The next one that caught our eye, Jason Harris saying it's moments like these that make games in Autzen amazing. Hashtag go ducks, nice little emoji there. And then this one kind of wrapping up a lot of what we're seeing from fans just in general, 77 points, sheesh. Again, go Ducks. Well done, everybody, and a lot of people saying tonight they are just loving this Oregon team. Now on to Oregon State. Fans are staying up late to watch the Beavers take on the University of Hawaii. This game started about an hour ago, and you can only watch it on Facebook. Before the game, the Beavers tweeted out photos of the team visiting the Pearl Harbor National Memorial, and they're walking into Aloha Stadium. KGW's Orlando Sanchez will have everything you need to know about both games later on in sports. All right, in the meantime, we have a traffic alert for you after a train derailed this morning. This happened in North Portland near Going Street and Greeley Avenue. Peabot says two locomotives and three tank cars derailed and crashed into a column, which holds up an overpass, damaging it. Union Pacific says no one was hurt, thankfully, and none of the liquefied gas they say in these tanks leaked. The road is closed from Interstate Avenue to Port Center Way on Swan Island while crews inspect the overpass. You can use River Street as a detour to get to Swan Island. All right, turning to weather now. It was a cool gray day outside. Vanessa Paz joining us. Vanessa, it felt like fall earlier, earlier in the day. Oh, yeah, Maggie. And the temperature is definitely uh, accounted for it. We were actually 15 degrees cooler today here in the downtown Portland metro area than we were yesterday to give you a perspective of, as you just mentioned, those fall like conditions that took effect today. In the meantime, I do want to let you know uh, we are seeing continuing to see some thunderstorms and lightning out on the eastern slopes of the Cascades as we zoom in and kind of show you exactly where well towards the Mount Hood area and east of that and then even uh, towards the Dallas area and even getting a lot of reports of it happening as well towards the Seattle area. It looks like it has shifted on west but regardless still throughout the Cascades from the Seattle down to the Portland metro area. So just keep that in mind if you have to travel through there maybe later on this evening or uh, early tomorrow morning. Uh, we have had some rainfall over the last six hours and that of course is to thank for the thunderstorms that we have been seeing over the past few few hours right now out in the Newport area, pretty mild 61 degrees with some calm winds closer to the Portland metro area. Also pretty uh, calm as well at 62 degrees and highs today weren't very impressive mid to upper 60s in the Portland metro area and we almost matched the exact same temperatures out along the coastline 68 out in Tillamook. As far as tomorrow, we're going to see increasing showers throughout the day and that will last for the start of your work week. I'll have more of those details ahead. Maggie. All right, Vanessa, sounds good. Thank you. Hey, we're seeing post on social media of signs at Fred Meyer stores in the Portland area and you can see they say they're looking for replacement workers due to a possible labor dispute with the UFCW local 555 union. So we asked Fred Meyer about these signs and they tell us they are looking for workers to keep their stores open in case of a strike. But the company says right now there may not be a strike at all and that actually echoes what the union has tweeted saying the strike is not imminent. In in fact, the union says Fred Meyer has, quote, fabricated an imminent strike. Please join me in giving a big Portland welcome to U.S. Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor. Portland Community College hosting Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor. There she is this afternoon for a free event for the release of her new children's book. It's called Just Ask, Be Different, Be Brave, Be You. And it's about the challenges kids can face when they feel different from their peers. She says she felt that way when she was diagnosed with diabetes as a kid. And as an adult, she says she's someone, excuse me, saw her give herself an insulin shot and assumed she was doing drugs. That's where she got the book's title, Just Ask. 
When you see some people doing things you don't understand, don't assume the worst in them. Just ask them what they're doing. Okay. Justice Sotomayor also took questions from the audience and signed copies of that book and other books she's written.